Uh, I still have I have to grade the darn thing, so I can't hand it back right now. Well, I haven't even seen their test yet, so. But I've seen yours. All right, somebody go over there and grab the uh, course two thing and pass it out, please. Since there's no homework to grab. I didn't keep track, but I do know Landon didn't get 100. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Do you know what that's from? It's from Dumb and Dumber. Oh. oh. Okay, now that. And she says, yeah. he says, so what's the what's the chance of a guy like me to to date a girl like you? And she goes, not good. Yeah. And he goes, what do you mean, not good? She goes, well, maybe like I don't know, one in a million. And he goes, so there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, pop down your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Check, please. Check, please. Pills are good. Pills are good. And that there is too bastard yet. <laughs> yeah, there's some bad words. We will not be saying those. It's really a bad One and two. I've never seen two, but one was a classic. I got worms. The pair with the bird. All right, kids are in line or wondering what the heck's going on, so we better stop. <laughs> all right here we go hey uh big picture today is the easiest of the day for this or easiest of the classes for this chapter um it will be confusing to some of you one part the rest will not be confusing and i will point that out so this entire chapter is basically how do you add track multiply and divide integers Integers are those numbers that look like whole numbers, but you get negative numbers as well, too. No decimals, no fractions, just what are called the integers. I'll explain that here in a second. All right, lots of definitions today. Uh, two of the definitions are confusing, but the rest are okay. So let's write them down. Box one. You got two boxes there. In the first box, put positive numbers. Well, positive numbers are numbers that are bigger than zero, right? By definition, if you are positive, you are bigger, greater than zero. That includes decimals and fractions and irrational numbers, uh, but it also includes the whole numbers, which is what we'll be talking about today. So those are positive numbers. The opposite of positive numbers are? Negative. Negative numbers, second box. Okay, negative numbers are numbers that are less than zero to include decimals, Fractions and irrational numbers. Yes. Is there a negative pi though? There is a negative pi, absolutely. I got a question. Negative pi is negative, well, in radians it's it's negative uh 180 degrees. Yeah. So like positive and negative, would you have like negative uh feelings against something and then like have negative Well you could certainly have negative feelings and the, well, the idea is that negative is bad if we're not talking about math. Negative in math does, doesn't connote either good or bad. All right. Uh, interestingly enough, negative numbers were mathematically a recent uh, invention, but discovery. Um, negative numbers uh, were, were only uh, recently. And by recently, I mean mathematically. I mean, we're still talking thousands of years ago. But originally, people did not have negative numbers. They dealt with the real world. In the real world, you don't have negative numbers. You go to a store, you don't buy negative two bags of groceries. Okay? How would you do that? Negative numbers, we don't know 100% sure, but negative numbers kind of stem from the fact, uh, from the business world, 
of uh, what happens when uh, you have 10 things and someone wants to buy 20 of them. Well, I can technically sell you 20 of things. Even if I only have 10, I owe you 10 more. Uh, and so in a bookkeeping sense, negative numbers are when you owe things. All right, uh, we will denote negative numbers with this sign, and here's your first problem. What's the problem? What's the problem with this symbol? This looks like a subtraction symbol. So you are now in eighth grade in pre algebra. So this symbol is both subtraction and negative. I will use them interchangeably this year. Sometimes you might hear me say negative three, sometimes you might hear me say subtract three. In the sense of a number line, negative three is the same as zero minus three, right? You get zero, you subtract three, you're at negative three. So this symbol, we will use interchangeably, uh, subtraction and negative. And you'll get a feel for it uh, the more that you hear it. But that is the first thing that I usually have students like, do you mean negative three or minus three? And I say, yes, I mean both. Some examples, negative three, negative 3.6, negative half. Now, last year, where we kind of ended, was we, were, we were doing adding, subtracting positive negative numbers. Um, uh, you saw the negative slightly above. You notice this minus is sort of in the middle, right? Uh, you will see that, I believe, today. Uh, you will see it kind of, am I right? Did they put two, yeah. right? You will see that today, but we won't see it much more in this book, okay? So positive numbers. Uh, what the heck are negative numbers? Some real world examples of negative numbers. The most common one is the thermometer. Like, oh, it's minus 10 degrees, right? Oh, it's got a wind chill factor of minus 20. So we're, we encounter this negative number, and it's clearly its interpretation is, well, on the other side of zero, right? Uh, if we talk about, uh, I have no idea what that is, um, but we talk about uh, sea level. Sea level is at zero, so if you go under the water, you're at negative sea level. Uh, last year, the point I was just making, uh, we, we denoted uh, negative numbers with a negative above on the left side. Uh, this year, right, the negative looks like a minus sign. Okay? Today, you will see, I think the last time that you'll see it look like this. I could be wrong, maybe the addition and subtraction will do it, but certainly once we're well into this chapter, they, they switch to this method. And from now on, I mean, that's the method. No one ever writes it like that. I'm not sure why they even started writing like that. It just confuses kids. All right, so three plus negative four this year, or three uh, minus uh, negative four last, I'm sorry, last year, three plus negative four, or three minus negative four this year, it will look like this. And generally, when there's two signs next to each other, generally, we put it in parentheses. You will be very comfortable with this. So here is last year, here is this year. And I don't have many kids that are, though. I'm not struggling to understand what does that mean. Jamie. Can you not put the parentheses? This looks like a giant minus. Yeah, but there will still be a space. I mean, you'll see that there are two, but um, I can't think of many times when they would not put those parentheses. All right, negative numbers, where do they live physically? Where do they live? Behind the to the left of zero, right, on a number line. So let's draw a number line. Everybody, box two, draw me a number line. How do I know that's a line? Straight. Well, lines by definition are straight. You'll learn that in geometry. But how do I know it's a number line? Or, or a line, I should say. It has arrows, literally. Without arrows, we call it a, a segment or a line segment. With arrows, it's a line. The lines indicate that it goes on forever and never stops. So how do you draw an infinite shape? Well, there's one right there. The arrows indicate that it goes on forever. Yeah. You're, you're okay, well, fix yourself. All right. Uh, on the opposite ends of a number line, no pun intended. This is the thing you got to wrap your head around. The right side goes where? Where does it go? Where does it go? What's way over there? What's way over there? Infinity. What's way over here? No. Negative infinity. Now, here's what you got to wrap your head around. And I literally said it incorrectly. Infinity is not a location. It's not like it's literally, physically, I can walk to it. Infinity is the idea that no matter how big of a number you can think about, you can always add one. And that never stops. So infinity is not a position that you reach. 
but we do say to the right of a number line is positive infinity, and to the left of a number line is negative infinity. Okay. We, uh, it, it, it's a mathematical concept. A uh, straight smack dab in the middle of the number line is always yeah. wrong. Whatever number you want, the number line goes on forever. There's not a middle. If it goes on forever, how can you ever find the middle? All right, well, you can't. So the point being is yes. In most number, or I shouldn't say most, in many number lines, zero is in the quote, quote, middle. But the arrows means it goes on forever. If, you, if I take this notebook right here and say, where is the middle? I can find it. It's finite, meaning like it, it doesn't go on forever. If something that goes on forever, you can't find the middle. All right, so zero, yeah, typically on a number line. But it doesn't have to be. Here's a number line where 10 is in the middle. Okay? So be comfortable with zero not being in the middle of, of a number line. All right, some basic ideas, right? Basic ideas. Uh, the positive numbers live to the right of zero. The negative numbers live to the left. So positive numbers are on the right. Negative numbers are on the left. Yes? So if you're like graphing the number, it's like zero to the middle. Do you do like from like one to the number on both sides? What do you or mean? Do you say it's like graph the number two? Well, I'll get to that in a second. All right, we'll talk about graphing. So positive numbers are on the right, negative numbers are on the left of zero. Zero is the only number that we say has no friends. Well, we, we say it has no uh, directional indicator. Uh, directional indicator meaning that negative means you're going to the left, positive means you're going to the right. Uh, zero is neither positive nor negative, right? All right, however, anywhere on any number line, you're looking at the board, if you go in this direction, what is happening? You're getting bigger, right? The value gets bigger. All right, let's see if you can say it correctly. As you go in that direction, what happens? The value gets smaller. But the numbers get larger. The number gets bigger, but the value gets smaller. That's kind of, whoa, wait. Yeah, it's true. I mean, negative a million is way over here. A million is pretty big, right? So it's a negative a million. But the value of negative a million is pretty darn small as compared to positive numbers. Okay? All right. The values get smaller, go left. The values get bigger, go right. All right. And this is the note that I'm going to make literally what I say. As the numbers get bigger, and I don't mean value, I mean the, the, the actual number, one, two, three, that sort of thing. All right. Hey, stop. Why would you think that's okay? Are both of you passing the class? Where should your attention be? All right, please put it where it's supposed to be. All right, back up here. Uh, values get bigger as we go to the right. Values get smaller as we go to the left. However, the numbers get bigger in either direction. All right, is anyone lost from that basic idea? All right, new idea, sort of, right? Uh, numbers relationship. It's going to ask you to relate two numbers, and it really is as simple as it seems, right? There are three types of relationships between any two numbers. The numbers can either be, it can also be positive. The numbers could be, if I give you two numbers, what's the relationship between those two numbers? <laughs> Well, pick two numbers. One and two. One and two. What's the relationship between one and two? One is, one is and one is, or I could have picked two numbers that are exactly the same. Therefore, the relationship could be, that's the three relationships. You're either bigger than the other one, or you're smaller, or you're equal. Those are the relationships. Hey, we got math symbols for those. What are the symbols? Math gang, gang symbols, right. So these symbols right here. And yes, I will insult your intelligence. And yes, I will make fun of you when you don't know the difference between the two. Well, maybe I won't make fun of you, but I will certainly point it out. No one in this class, I guarantee you, if I gave you two numbers, will put the wrong symbol. But many of you still in eighth grade can't tell me the name 
I mean, I'll point to it and I'll say, what is that? And there'll be a pause and there'll be, oh, I'm going to mess it up and he's going to make fun of me, right? Because you don't know the names. So let me try to make it clear right now. If one of these things is floating off by itself, you always must read it from. If it's floating by itself, like they are right now, I mean, there's no numbers around it. You must read it left to right. But as soon as I put two numbers, you can read it right to left or left to right. It doesn't make a difference. It will absolutely change the name of these symbols, though, if you read it from right to left or if you read it from left to right. But if the symbol itself is floating off by itself, you only read it from left to right. Okay. So the inequalities, this is the, how do you know it's not less than? Because you floating by itself, you must read it from left to right. So as we go left, right, yes, alligator, Pac-Man, whatever. The bigger number goes to the mouth, right? Uh, that is called the greater than symbol, okay? And what? What do you mean goes to the arrow? Like, are you sure the bigger number doesn't go to the arrow? What do you define as the arrow? The, the vertex of these yeah. two things right here. I'm 100 percent sure. Okay. Uh, that is the because it's floating there by. There's no numbers around it, so you must read it from left to right. Now we come to Jaden's calling this the arrow. Yeah. All right. Where does the bigger number go for this one? On the right side. Okay. Yes, I am trying to insult your intelligence because this is not a great pre algebra. But I will have kids, and the, the issue is, especially when we get to word problems, it'll say less than, and you won't know what symbol to put because you don't know the names of these things. So try to learn them this year. Uh, this is the. Well, certainly, it looks like greater than. The line underneath it means it could also be equal. Three is greater than or equal to three. I'm like, well, it's not greater, but it is equal. Okay? So that's the greater than or equal to symbol, and I, apparently I don't have room for less than or equal to symbol. The first thing I have you do for homework is ridiculously easy as it appears. You are going to put either a less than or a greater than symbol next to the pairings of numbers. All right, I will give you 15 seconds. Go. Go. Remember, negative numbers are the tricky ones. As the number gets bigger, its value gets smaller. You got the right idea. If you make a mistake, it will most likely be on the negative numbers. As the number gets bigger, its value gets smaller. 15 seconds are up. Class, upper left or left right. Tell me the name of the symbol. Less than. Tell me the name of the symbol. Greater than. Greater than. Greater than. I heard some greater than for that one. All right. So for those of you that could not do that, my bet is you wrote the right, maybe not a couple mistakes on the negatives, but my bet is that your issue is what is the name of the symbol? Okay. Try to fix that this year. All right. We're not doing any more of that. That's way too simple. All right, so uh, Jackson said, well, well uh, Mr. C, how do you, uh, I, I'm staying with you, but how do you put uh, numbers on a number line? All right. All right, the number one mistake that I see is that you don't make your tick, mark, tick marks proportional, meaning that you put a tick mark, and, and then all of a sudden the next one is either way far away from the previous one or it's closer. They need to be proportionally spaced. You also can't make up numbers. If you decide the first tick mark is zero and the second one is one, guess what when the third one has to be? You don't get to say 10. You have to say two. Sure, you can go by twos or fives or tens. But after you put the second tick mark, your scale has been determined. You have to stick to that scale. All right, let me show you an example first. So you'll be asked to place a certain number of numbers on a number line. I'm going to give you the best recommendation. Everybody listening? So here's how it's done. Step number one, well, you got to draw a number line. Step number two, before you put any tick marks on it, figure out what's the biggest and what's the smallest. If the biggest and the smallest are decimal numbers, 
pick one bigger and one smaller, and we want whole numbers or integers. Okay? So if 2.5 was the biggest number, I wouldn't pick 2.5. I'd probably pick 3. Right? But absolutely at a minimum, pick your largest and your smallest and make them integers. Okay? Hey, we're lucky right here that 3 and negative 3 are the largest and smallest. And they all integers. So step number one, if you need to write this down, write this down. You draw a number line. It has arrows on it. Step number two is figure out what's the largest and the smallest. And then you must evenly space out. You do get to determine whether you want to go by ones or by twos, by fives, by tens. That's all well and good. But make sure that your tick marks, there's my smallest, there's my largest. There are my tick marks. They're evenly spaced. It just so happens on this number line that zero is in the middle. Zero does not have to be in the middle. It just so happens on this number line that I did go by ones. I could have gone by twos and it would be a perfectly fine number line. But what you can't do is you can't just put these four numbers on a number line. You gotta plot them in the correct position. <laughs> Third and final thing, uh, if you had me last year, you already know this. If you didn't have me, sometimes I see students put the dot to indicate the point above or below the number line. The dot goes on the number line and it goes around a tick mark, if there's a tick mark there. Clearly 2.5 doesn't have a tick mark. But three needs to go on three. Negative three needs to go on negative three, right? Zero needs to go on zero. You see where I put my, my dot? It needs to be filled in as well, too. Don't put an open circle. We'll talk about that when we get to inequalities. Okay? Uh, 2.5 is a problem. There's no tick mark. So place 2.5 as close as you can to where it should be. Hey, 2.5 is between 2 and 3, so put a dot right there. If you want to uh, go overboard, then you would label it as 2.5. This can, becomes a problem, especially if there's more than one number between two and three. Um, sometimes you can have arrows pointing to the dot, and you can't, sometimes you run out of space. Uh, what am I left with? Uh, we got to do three, and I got to do negative three, and I'm done. Okay, this is uh, try to be as precise as possible. Notice my circle doesn't go smack dab in the middle right here, but I would certainly give you credit for that. Any questions on this, Jackson? This was your question. No. Okay. The number one mistake I just see is his kids like make up numbers. I said no one made I don't know. Zero goes in the middle, then I'm gonna go put a put a, a tick mark on 2.5. <laughs> and then a tick mark on three. You're like, what? They're not proportionally spaced. Let's do one. Let's do one. All right. First step we need a, we need a line. So I'll put a line. Arrows on the end. Second thing, we got to figure out what's the biggest and what's the largest. What's the biggest and uh, biggest and smallest? Sorry. What's the biggest and smallest number there? Four and negative two. All right, four and negative two. So what do we want to go by? Ones, halves, twos, twos, ones. Ones. All right. If I, I mean, you're gonna see a beautiful one here, but I'll try to do it by hand here. Um, so if my smallest number is negative two, right? Do I want my smallest tick mark to be negative two? No. Okay, why not? We want the smallest number to be in the middle? My smallest number is negative two. Do I want my first tick mark to be negative two? Yes or no? I can. Some people would say, I don't know, I'm just going to go to negative five to positive five. That puts zero smack dab in the middle, right? So I do negative five right here. And I do positive five right here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? I got to go up to four. So maybe not go from negative five to positive five. Maybe go negative four to positive four. The kids that do this, this is how I do it. Is that way I don't need to worry about it. my tick marks will be proportional. How many tick marks between zero and negative four? Three. Three. So that's easy to do. One, two, three. Now, is that perfect? It isn't, but it's close. And then one, two, three right here. One, two, three. And now when I label them, that would make it negative two, and that would be positive two. Do I need to put all the labels? Yeah. Don't have to. Put enough that you indicate what's going on. And then I can place my dots, right? 
if you didn't do this and you wanted the most efficient one, we go from negative two to positive four. You just gotta be careful because then you gotta think about how many tick marks you need. I like mine because I don't need to do much thinking. I just need to figure out, oh, I have negative four to positive four, that puts zero in the middle. Or maybe I go from negative 10 to negative two, right? Something like that. What's up? And so the integer of negative two be positive? No. What? How about you let me teach that first? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so there's a number line, and I went from negative two to positive four. Like I said, the only issue with this is, well, zero is not in the middle, one is, and you got to count how many tick marks. Right? I'm not saying always go from negative five to positive five, especially when there's only one negative number and it's negative one, you got a positive 10. Then you're going from negative 10 to positive 10. You got all this dead space in the negative zone. Has anyone lost on anything I did so far? Okay. So I need to place four on four. Uh, where's three and a third? Where is three and a third? Is it in the middle between three and four? It's a little bit to the left. It's, well, by definition, it's one third. So if I were to break this up into three parts, one, two, three, then it would be right here, right? It's not in the middle. It's not in the middle. It's one third away from the position three. Uh, then what are we gonna do? 2.5, that's easy. And then negative two and I'm done. Okay. Questions on this? How many did I give you like this tonight for homework? Uh, like three. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, moving on. Two left. All right, same idea, different question. Numbers on a number line, same idea. It says write these numbers in ascending order. Right, why did I make it blue? Because you're gonna screw this up if you don't pay attention, which some of you did on the test. When I said to write things in from least to greatest, some of you didn't know what that meant. <coughs> Do you want me to show your test in front of everybody? No. I don't care. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. All, right. all right. Make sure you read the question. You all know what ascending means. What does ascending mean? Uh, going, up. going up, right? I'm ascending the staircase, right? So I need to go from least to greatest. What's the smallest number here? Um, negative. Yeah, well, by definition, negatives are smaller than positives, and there's only one negative, so negative three is the smallest. Then comes... Zero. And I don't want to insult your intelligence, but there's the answer. Okay? Be careful with the negatives. Remember, as the numbers get bigger, the values decrease. Uh, what's the difference here? Going down. So it's descending. I'm descending the staircase. I'm getting smaller, right? Ironically, when you descend a staircase to someone on the bottom floor, you're getting larger. All right. Uh, in descending order, Kai, what is it? Uh, uh, two thirds, zero. It's not two thirds. Uh, two, uh, two, uh, Just uh, read what it says. Two, three. Two, three. Uh, two and three tenths or two point three. Keep going. Uh, zero, negative three. All right. Is anyone going to have an issue with writing numbers in ascending or descending order? Be careful with the negatives. All right. Do box five all by yourself. Oh. No, All right, stop what you're doing on the board. There are the answers. We good to go? All right. Last thing, write this down, please. Everything you see here in yellow. Everything you see here in yellow. There are two, and I said that we're going to come to one confusing thing. This is the confusing thing. You're not going to be confused by the word integers. That's just whole numbers, their opposites, and zero. But you will be confused between opposites and absolute value. An opposite just means this. What's the other number that's the same distance away from zero as you? So what's the opposite of five? Negative five. 
What's the opposite of negative five? That's how it works. You will be confused, however, with what's called absolute value. Let me talk. Absolute value. Absolute value is not opposite. Absolute value is how far is what's inside away from zero. You see where I'm pointing? How far is negative five away from zero? How far is negative five away from zero? So what's the absolute value of negative five? Integers to zero? How far is negative five away from zero? It's five. Is that the same for integer? Let me give you some examples. So opposites and absolute value. Two different things, yet they kind of have the same flavor. Right? The reason why we have this definition of opposites is because that's what defines integers. Integers are the whole numbers or the natural numbers, the counting numbers. They're opposites and zero. This thing called absolute value, stop with doing look at the board. Simply says this, it looks like parentheses, yes? Yeah. Not parentheses. It says, how far this rectum is away from zero? Ten. Okay. Brecton, how far is this away from zero? So here's the deal on absolute value. Can you ever get a negative answer? Yes. Never. Because the question says, how far are you away from zero? It's always going to be a positive answer. So the answer, stay here. We've got to do one last thing. How far is this away from zero? How far is this away from zero? How far is that? Stay out. Stay out. How far is this away from zero? 15. No, no. How far is it away from zero? 0.3. Okay. All of those, are there any negative answers? Stop. Are there any negative answers here? No. Okay, so it leads you to believe that if you ever see the absolute value answer, there could never be a negative answer, and that is correct. Yes. Now I'm going to show you something where the answer is negative, not to prove me wrong, but to show you something additional. Everyone needs to stop. Put your hands on your desk. All right. So here is, it doesn't mean that it changes the sign. Opposites changes the signs. You're opposite, you're positive, now you're negative. You're negative, positive. Absolute value does not swap the signs. What's the answer? What's the answer? It doesn't swap the signs. Not negative seven, it's seven. Which leads you to believe that the answer could never be negative. It's true. But I'm going to show you this. These act like grouping symbols, parentheses. So guess what you've got to do first? What's inside the parentheses? How far is that away from zero? Okay. And then I just did that, but I didn't do this. So guess what you got to do? So it's not saying that the absolute value of negative four is negative four. It's saying subtract the absolute value of negative four, and that's all I got. Be careful on those. All right, get out of here. It says um, um, grab the opposite number. So are we just well, what's the opposite number? The opposite number on our line? Well, whatever the numbers they give you, they want you to grab the opposite number. All right, e-learners, you have any questions? Send me an email. If not, have a great weekend. We'll see you uh, next week.